So you're thinking about moving to and living in Vancouver and asking yourself, is it worth it? How expensive is it really? What's the good and the bad of living in Vancouver? Well, in this video, I'm gonna cover all that and more as I dive into the top 11 pros and the top 11 cons of living in Vancouver. And we're gonna start it off with the cons right off the bat so that you know the dark side of this beautiful city and what you're going to be getting into. My name is Jonathan Lerner, and I am a local realtor here in Vancouver. And this year marks 20 years of living in the greater Vancouver area, everywhere from New Westminster and Burquitlam to downtown Vancouver, over to UBC, and now Richmond for the past four years. And my team here at the Vancouver Life Real Estate Group, we get calls, we get texts, we get emails every day from people just like you that are wanting to make the move here to the Lower Mainland. And so whether you're moving here in the next nine days or 90 days, reach out to us at the info and then a link just in the description below, or you can book a Zoom call with us and we'd love to be able to help you make a smooth move to this area. And beyond that, I release new videos to this channel every week about different neighborhoods and what it's like living in Vancouver, as well as current events and updates that you need to know if you're thinking about jumping into the real estate market here. Let's dive into today's video. In this video, you're going to decide if it's worth it to live in Vancouver. And I'm gonna give you the top 11 pros and the top 11 cons of living in Vancouver. And they are absolute must know items before you move here from outside of this region. And we're gonna start everything off by jumping into the cons of living here. And as much as I wanna share the amazing things about living in this city of Vancouver and its surrounding areas and cities, there's reasons that you may not wanna live here. And I wanna get those out of the way right away and then I'll follow it up with the pros of why this city is known worldwide. The bad and the ugly of Vancouver, BC, Canada. This list of cons is in no particular order except for this first one, which is the worst one of them all. The worst con is that Vancouver has the most unaffordable housing in the world. While our, our scenery is stunning and the weather is mild for the most part all year round, especially when compared to the rest of the country, our housing is extremely expensive and it has been given the title of the least affordable place to live with respect to housing in the world. And it doesn't mean that we have the most expensive housing in the world, although it is very expensive. It's the most expensive housing we're looking at the price versus the income level that the average person is getting here. The price to income ratio is 13.3 right now, which basically means that the average home is 13 times what the average person's income is here. And so home prices have completely detached from what our incomes and salaries are of what we can actually afford. You know, most financial people are saying that you should spend mo no more than 30% of your income on your housing. But to be honest, here in the Greater Vancouver area, that is absolutely impossible to do. There's a few reasons for this. And the first one of those is that we have a scarce land supply. We are bordered by natural boundaries on all three sides. So we have the US United States border to the south, we have the Pacific Ocean to the west, and we have our mountains to the north. So in terms of our ability to expand and the land supply we have, we are very limited for our ability to expand. Now, next to that, our population has grown by over 30% since 2001. So in terms of basic supply and demand, we are really, especially over the last couple of years with the immigration that the country has done, we are well behind the housing demands that we require to be able to house the number of people that are coming into the country and that we just even have currently. And over the course with the interest rates that have been coming up over the last while, uh, housing starts to decrease by 22%. So we've had this mass influx, 1.2 million people over the last year in 2023, and yet our housing starts for new buildings coming to market, uh, housing starts have decreased by 22%. So it's just exacerbating the problem right now. On top of that, our zoning bylaws have been quite prohibitive in terms of being able to build and being able to densify in different areas. And then on top of that, our taxes are very expensive in terms of the development side and contribute about over 30% of the cost of being able to build a building, let alone then those taxes then get passed on to you as the end consumer. Prices as of December, 2023, because the current stats for January, 2024 are not out yet. I'm going to cover them as the Greater Vancouver Real Estate Board as a whole, so all of the surrounding cities encompassing, and then I'm gonna give you the numbers right after that with the specific city of Vancouver. And I'm going to compare what are the average of all the homes combined, all the different product types, and I'm gonna break it down by detached homes, townhouses, and condos. So 
The home price index for all home types in the greater Vancouver area is just over $1,168,000, whereas for the city of Vancouver, it's one million, or just over $1,258,000. So $90,000 more approximately in the city of Vancouver for the average. Now that changes when we go into detached homes. So detached homes across the greater Vancouver real estate board, just under $2 million at $1.964 million. And then in Vancouver though, the average benchmark price for a detached home is just under $2.6 million. Then we go into townhouses, Greater Vancouver Real Estate Board, we're looking at a million and 72,000, whereas in Vancouver, we're looking at just under $1.3 million. And then lastly for condos, not a big gap here for condos, the real, real, Greater Vancouver Real Estate Board is sitting at 751,000, whereas Vancouver specifically is sitting at $781,000. Jumping into rent, in Metro Vancouver, the average renter uses 46 to 51% of their entire salary, their entire income, towards covering their rental costs for the month. Now here's some of the rents that you can expect. Now keep in mind, this is for all of Metro Vancouver. This is not just for the city of Vancouver specifically. And that, that covers everything from West Vancouver to Vancouver, Burnaby, New West, Surrey, uh, and multiple other cities combined. So just keep that in mind here. So when we look at the entire average dollar per square foot for that entire area is just over $3 a square foot in terms of what your rental rates are gonna be. Now this varies drastically depending on where you are in the greater real estate port because you could easily be double that depending on where you are in the type of product that you're jumping into. An average one bedroom condo in the greater Vancouver area will rent for just under $2,400. Whereas if you look for a one bedroom in downtown Vancouver, you're looking closer to $3,000 a month for that unfurnished one bedroom condo. All right, let's look really quickly at some of the rental rates of the different cities surrounding Vancouver. So take a look at this graph here. These are the most expensive cities in Canada and four of them out of the top five are all in the greater Vancouver area in terms of rental rates. You have West Vancouver top of the list, then North Vancouver, then Vancouver, Markham, which is in Ontario, and then Richmond. So four of the top five rental markets for the most expensive are sitting right here in the lower mainland. Then we're just gonna jump into what is the average rental rate for one bedrooms, two bedrooms, three bedrooms of unfurnished versus furnished. And so right here, you're gonna get into all the different cities surrounding Vancouver, including Vancouver itself, and if you scroll down second from the bottom there, Vancouver, for a one bedroom, you're sitting at an average rental rate of $2,600 a month. Two bedroom, you're looking at $3,600. Three bedroom, you're looking at $4,300 a month. Then when you look at the furnished rentals for the exact same one bed, two bed, three bed, a furnished one bedroom in Vancouver, you're looking at just almost $3,100 a month. Two bedroom sitting at $4,300 a month and a three bedroom furnished, you're looking at $5,300 a month. Now building on top of the con of housing being the most unaffordable in the world, now we also have the cost of living. So con number two is that the cost of living in Vancouver is also extremely expensive. And so beyond just housing, I wanna run into some of the daily things that you're gonna run into. So gas is we have a very large tax to be able to handle our transit system and everything else that the province wants to tax us on. And so gas was sitting right now, this is right at the end of January, 2024, of $1.66 a liter. And then at its peak, the highest that we saw last year, June, 2023, it was sitting at $2.25 a liter. Now, if you're in the States, just multiply that by 3.8 uh, 3 liters to a gallon and you'll see how absorbent that our gas prices here are. So if you are driving, that adds astronomically to kind of what your budget is based off of how long your commute is. Now, if you opt not to drive, then you also have the transit options and they're not super cheap here either. However, they're drastically more financially feasible than owning a car and commuting. So when it comes to the transit side of things, it's a, we have three different zones across the greater Vancouver uh, real estate area. And so depending on how far you drive is going to dictate what is the cost of your ticket and, and or a monthly pass. So a single ticket staying within basically your city boundaries is gonna be $3.15 and then, or up to $6.20 for a three zone. And if you get the monthly pass, you're looking, uh, the one zone pass is $104 and the three zone pass is $189. Next to that, just some basic kind of entertainment. Your, your a Cineplex movie ticket here is gonna be 16 bucks. 
So between two people, you add some popcorn and a drink, you're looking at basically a $45 to $50 outing to go to see a movie. The standard for a pretty basic meal in terms of an entree, yeah, kind of like a, your regular Earl's, Joey's, Cactus Club, for your kind of that covers the basis that most people will kind of entry level restaurant is going to be typically $25 for an entree. And that's not including any appetizers or drinks or anything like that. So in terms of our regular cost of living, it is definitely very expensive here in the city of Vancouver as well. So you must take that into account if you're thinking about making the move here and living in Vancouver. There is one more big cost that I'm also going to roll into the next con. And this one is specifically for families who have kids and you require daycare and care for your children. And so con number three is the cost of daycare and the wait list that go along with that. When it comes to daycare, there are some great things that are coming down from the federal government of trying to make daycare and childcare more accessible financially. But right now it's still in the process and is definitely not uh, all the way across the board yet. So right now the average daycare after some subsidies is in the range of a thousand to twelve hundred dollars a month per child for infant and toddler so basically kind of the two years and under if you're in the three-year-old to five-year-old range for your children then you're looking at a few hundred dollars under that maybe the eight to nine hundred dollar range then when it gets into your after school out of school care so if you have some older children that can't quite stay at home yet on their own or, or walk home take the bus kind of thing then you're looking anywhere in the range of 300 to six or seven hundred dollars a month to be able to handle those after school uh, requirements that you have. And so my wife and I are our oldest right now is in kindergarten and we pay about 300, 320 dollars or so a month after subsidies for after school care alone. So we don't do before school care and that is just our, our cost for after school care for our oldest right now. As I mentioned, there is some things federally that the country is trying to do and the Canada is trying to get $10 a day daycare across the board. And so that is something that has been instituted in several places throughout Vancouver and the surrounding cities. However, they are definitely not in all the daycares. And the other side that is the other big con in terms of daycares and childcare is that there is a massive wait list. It is very common to have a minimum of a year, if not two years for a wait list to be able to get your child into a childcare program. And unfortunately that doesn't work well because most maternity leaves here in Canada are 12 months. You know, you might, very few people take the extension of 18 months uh, because you just reduce your income over the course of 18 months. Um, instead of 12 months, that same income is spread over 18. But basically, your wait lists are super, super long. So as literally the day that you are, your, your first, child is born, you want to get them on multiple wait lists to increase your chances of possibly being able to get childcare. Because if you want to go back to work at the 12 month mark, obviously you need childcare options and you need to get your name on those wait lists. And I was just on a, a daycare facility this morning and they have a two to three year wait list and they've just closed their wait list completely because they are so at capacity and basically guaranteeing that anyone on the wait list right now, they are full until mid 2025 that there's gonna be basically no change in terms of the wait list of people that are wanting to get in. And so just absolutely nuts trying to get daycare and that is absolutely, if you are a family trying to find care for your children, that it makes it very, very difficult to be able to make the move here. There are all, of course, private options and some other, uh, uh, options of some childcare, but again, there may be a different cost associated with that. So it's definitely something to take into account. Con number four is our rapid population growth that we have had in the country, especially over the last couple of years post COVID when we've been trying to hit these record immigration numbers that the government has set some goals for. And it has created a massive strain on our infrastructure, in particularly the healthcare system and our school system is the hospital wait times can be extremely long just to be able to see a doctor. And the hardest part for many people, especially locals here, is that you don't find a family doctor anymore. And if you don't have one now, you're basically not gonna get one. So for basic things that you have to go to the emergency room for the doctor for, is your wait times are extremely long right now, upwards of eight plus 12 hours to be able to see someone, depending on what time of the day that you end up going into the hospital. So that's been really tough. And this was already an issue pre-COVID, and now it's just been exacerbated with the increased population that we have had. And it's also our school system, you know, our, our, our classrooms are literally bursting at the seams because we don't have enough room and enough school infrastructure to be able to handle the number of children that need access to this education system. And so 
This increased population has definitely put a strain on our infrastructure, including just the city infrastructure of things like uh, utilizing the, the sewage and, and, and water systems that we have, electrical and all those types of things, is the more and more people we bring into the city, the more and more upgrades that we need to do to be able to handle that, which means increased uh, taxes and fees that are gonna come at the municipal level to be able to pay for all these upgrades that we need to do for not just today, but the future growth of the next 30, 40, 50 years to come. This population growth leads to con number five, which is traffic congestion. Vancouver has been labeled in TomTom's 2022 traffic index as having the worst traffic, not just in Canada, but on the continent. I, I find that hard to believe given my experiences elsewhere in the States, but they have the data, so I can't argue with that. But with that said, when, when looking strictly at city centers, Toronto actually phase, uh, fares the worst with the longest time to move through a certain area. But when they're looking at Vancouver as the worst, they're looking at the entire Metro Vancouver area, which is uh, when you're gonna take into account all the highways, the bridges and tunnels and the, among the different cities for your commute. So with that in mind, then yes, I definitely agree that our traffic is really bad and you just have to expect to be hanging out in your car for a while and that you're gonna be crawling at certain times especially when it comes time for rush hour. Con number six, affordable recreation options. We absolutely have a lack of community centers and affordable recreation options. I mean, when you include private options, then there's definitely space, but not everyone has the money for that, especially when it builds on top of our lack of affordability that we already talked about. So, you know, heading to the pool here, for example, a family for two adults, two kids, you're looking at 17 to $20 a visit, depending on the location. And then your indoor jungle gyms to keep the kids busy. 365 fun days in Richmond, that's $23 a kid and $7 per adult. And you get a maximum two hours. Kidropolis is like a make-believe with different grocery stores, and doctors, and it's 25 bucks for a kid and adult. So when it's cold and rainy outside and you don't really wanna be getting the kids all dressed up in their rain gear where they end up being out there for five minutes and wanna come back inside, it can absolutely be definitely costly to be able to entertain them, especially during these cold, rainy months, which in Vancouver have a tendency to last a long time. But they're, thankfully, the temperatures are more mild here, so even if we do get out in the rain, it's still, uh, they're not gonna be freezing right off the bat as if it would be kind of in central or eastern uh, Canada during the winter time. There is lots more to share with you, and if you are enjoying this video and you're getting some value from it, can I please ask a favor to tap that thumbs up button right down below this video Video. And then later, if you notice that I've missed something important in this video that you think others should, should know or that you want more details on, please leave a comment for me down below. All right, let's jump into the next con. Con number seven is going to be completely up to you, whether it's a con or it could be a pro for you based off of where you're starting out as. But if you prefer a drier climate, well, then Vancouver is definitely not going to be the right place for you because it rains literally about half the year here. And so that's gonna be primarily between October to April, May kind of time range where the majority of the rain comes down. And, but just know that we are, it's a wet climate here. The thing that gets most people here is that we get a lack of sunshine during the winter. And so it's pretty, we don't really get four seasons very often. It's pretty rare. And so typically from October to yeah, May, May is a, a, sometimes it's a great month, sometimes it's not a great month, but October to April, it's quite gray here and with very, very little sunshine. And so you notice that when the sunshine does come out, it's like the city comes alive on those days because it's, it, we just need it. We're trying to soak it in a, as much as possible, but that would have to be the con in terms of the weather, that it is uh, gray and rainy most of the time here. However, having said that, we definitely do not deal with the extremes of heat and humidity during the summer, and we don't deal with the extremes of super, super cold like the prairies and out east do, or the amounts of snow that they get. So um, in terms of our weather, we are the, basically the most mild temperatures in the entire country on the west coast here being right by the ocean. Call number eight of living in Vancouver is a tough one, and that is the homelessness and addiction that does occur in Vancouver and that you are absolutely going to see. You know, if you come to visit Vancouver, one of the biggest things is that you, you're gonna be going to downtown Vancouver. There's a lot of sites and a lot of destinations to be able to see as a tourist and also just for, for nightlife and different restaurants and, and social life to be able to go out and enjoy with your friends and family there as well. And while you're out, you are absolutely going to see homelessness. and. A lot of it, you well notice, is absolutely going to be concentrated into the downtown east side with the epicenter of it being really at Maine and Hastings and the kind of surrounding blocks around that area. So 
If you're not in that downtown east side area, you're going to see it, but it's it's going to be just a little bit here and there. Uh, versus if the closer that you get to that area, you're going to see it a lot more. So if that's you know if that's something that you feel really uncomfortable with, really just kind of avoiding that area. But there's there's still so much safety in downtown Vancouver and the other parts of the city as well. And so I wouldn't really kind of worry about feeling unsafe as a result of that. You know, in nighttime maybe you want to avoid that area, but. Other than that, it doesn't really affect your safety there. It's just something that you are going to see. And as much as it sometimes is tough to see, it is it is something that's absolutely there and, and prevalent. And you know, it's we've done some work to try and improve that, but it really hasn't improved. And I just don't know if it's going to improve. So, you know, it is something that's gonna be living with the city for, for some time. Con number nine of living in Vancouver is there's a big income disparity. In terms of the range of where incomes and salaries go, there is a definitely range of high income and there is a range of very low income. So there's a very big disparity between the salary and income ranges that you can earn here. And so my biggest thing, especially because of what I talked about already about housing and the cost of living being so expensive is that if you are going to be coming here into the city and planning on living here for an extended period, is do your best to secure something in terms of getting a salary, getting an income before you come into the city. And what that's gonna, obviously it's gonna help you financially and not be stressed right off the bat. The, the other, the acronym that comes up for British Columbia, BC, also means bring cash. And so if you don't have a job lined up right away, make sure that you have a, a savings foundation that you can rest on for a, you know a few, several months if you don't find a job right away so that you're not super stressed out and you can focus your efforts on trying to find something rather than the fact that you have zero money and it's running out and you don't know what you're gonna do next month. Call number 10 of living in Vancouver is the cost of traveling within the country. So this isn't Vancouver specific, but it absolutely is a part of Canada. And in many countries, when you are in the country, it's very cheap to travel once you're inside the country, but Canada is not one of those. Oftentimes, you know, being in Vancouver, it's gonna be cheaper to fly to Hawaii or Mexico or, or even Asia for cheaper than what it's gonna cost you to fly east to Toronto. And so, you know, I, I've lived in BC all my life and I've seen more of other parts of the world than I've ever seen of Canada, just for the simple fact of how expensive that it is to be able to travel across back and forth. And so if you wanna see other parts of Canada, just know that it is fairly expensive to do so. Con number 11 is our transit system. Now, we actually have a very robust transit system and it's actually pretty good overall. However, having said that, let's uh, start with the good. Sky trains are very reliable, leave on time, depart on time. Unless there's a big snowfall, everything's usually pretty good for those. Um, buses, you know, some buses will, will break down regularly. Uh, the times won't be as strong. Maybe they get overcrowded during the rush hour times or when students are going to school, they get really full at those times. Um, overall, the transit system is pretty good. My biggest thing that everyone kind of hates around here is the BC ferries. So if you were going to be taking a ferry on a regular basis to go to Vancouver Island or go up the Sunshine Coast and the Seashell area, those very often you're experiencing delays, you're experiencing cancellations on a very regular basis. And so that is my biggest con when it comes to the transit side of things when you have to rely on things like that. BC Ferries is very, very, very tough to rely on. All right, I have a bonus con for you, and it's not Vancouver specific, but overall about Canada as a result of the last couple of years through COVID, uh, the money our country printed, our inflation levels, job market, immigration numbers, and more. I told you I was gonna show the dark side. Um, this bonus cause, it doesn't look great for Canada overall. And that is that Canada is now ranked dead last in the OECD for a long-term per capita economic growth. So the OECD is essentially, it's a forum where the governments of 37 democracies with market-based economies, they, they collaborate to develop standards to promote sustainable economic growth. And so basically we are dead last in terms of our forecasted economic growth among all these countries. And it's putting us into something known as the population trap. So what is that? Well, basically it's when the population is growing so fast that all the available savings that we have are needed just to maintain our standard of living, making any increase in our living standards virtually impossible. So in other words, basically we had 3.2% population growth last year alone. That's $1.2 million, uh, 1.2 million people. At that rate, the infrastructure, the resources required to absorb this growth and experience any kind of improvement in the way we live our lives is so, so difficult and non-existent at this point. So that is our bonus con and something overall about the city of Vancouver. All right, that's the real talk on the top 11 cons that you need to know if you're thinking about moving to Vancouver. 
and the bonus con about Canada's current economic growth forecast right now. Do you have any other cons that you think others should know? You know, what do you think are the, about the ones that I share? Please let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, tap that subscribe button as well. And then right after you do that, tap the bell that shows up so that you can be notified of future videos that I create. Let me know everything that you need to know about this area, the real estate market here, and the different neighborhoods here so that you can make an informed decision if Vancouver and its surrounding cities is the right place for you. Now it is time to dive into the pros of living in Vancouver and what are the absolutely amazing things that this city has to offer to hopefully combat and overcome some of those cons that I talked about earlier in the video. Now I want to share those cons, you know, be very upfront, heartfelt, like this is, this is the nature of our city and, and not holding anything back so you can make the best informed decision. And so now that you know those cons, let's dive into those pros. Pro number one for living in Vancouver is the absolutely breathtaking scenery. We are surrounded by the ocean and the mountains here and they make for a just picturesque landscape, photography, going out for absolutely beautiful walks. And you are minutes away from forest trails and the ocean, basically no matter where you are in the city. And that's the best part because it is literally right in your back door, looking out your window. It's there everywhere, wherever you are in the city. And that the, the scenery and the landscapes and the scenery that you have available right here is what a big part of what Vancouver is known for. And why we are so well known worldwide is this absolutely beautiful scenery and landscapes that we have. Building on top of that, pro number two for living in Vancouver is that we are not a concrete jungle. Many heavier, densely populated metropolitan areas feel very much like a concrete jungle with very, very little green space. But we have over 250 parks throughout the city of Vancouver. And I was looking at the map this morning before doing this video and just in downtown alone, where the typical concrete jungle is going to be in most uh, downtown cores, metropolitan areas, I counted almost 30 parks and green spaces just in downtown Vancouver alone. So you know that even if you are in the most densely populated area of the city, you have easy access to green space within a very short walk away. And again, that is one of the absolute best parts about living in Vancouver. It's just that outdoor lifestyle that we have available and that knowing when you look out the window, it's not just concrete and windows, that you have so much more surrounding you. Pro number three is the diverse culture here. The city is renowned for its multicultural atmosphere with literally every ethnicity, language, and tradition found here if you look for it. And the best part is that no matter your background, you'll find your community here and you'll find certain areas of the city cater more to certain backgrounds or offering you the experience of that background. And these neighborhoods provide residents and, and visitors with a sense of familiarity and, and cultural connection, allowing them or, or, or you to foster a strong social life and a sense of belonging to it if you are new to this area. So understanding these neighborhoods can help individuals connect with communities that resonate with their cultural background and, and fostering a stronger social life and, and a sense of belonging. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through some of these communities, uh, where they are and where they are located in this city. And just note that these are very specific to the city of Vancouver and that there's many other ethnicities represented in bigger ways than uh, many of the other surrounding cities around Vancouver. So let's jump into the map of Vancouver and here we are starting off with Chinatown. Chinatown is one of the oldest and largest Chinatowns in North America and this area is a hub for the Chinese community. Residents and visitors can immerse themselves in Chinese culture through the vibrant markets, authentic cuisine and cultural events that take place here. Koreatown, situated in the West End in downtown, this neighborhood is a melting pot of Korean culture. Residents and visitors can enjoy Korean cuisine, shops, and cultural experiences to have really help foster a strong sense of community. Then just south of Koreatown in the West End, primarily the Davy Village area, this area is known for its LGBTQ plus community, particularly along Davy Street, and the West End really celebrates that diversity and inclusivity with the Pride Parade every single year, and it's a very welcoming space for people from various backgrounds. Moving out of the downtown area, we have Little Saigon, which is found in the area of Kingsway and Main Street. Little Saigon is really kind of the heart of the Vietnamese community, and it offers authentic Vietnamese cuisine, markets, and cultural events. And then south of that on Main Street, we go into the Punjabi Market or Little India, which is located on Main Street, primarily between 41st Avenue and 49th Avenue. And it's the focal point for the South Asian community, particularly those of Punjabi descent. 
and it boasts a range of Indian and South Asian shops, restaurants, and cultural events as well. Then we move more east over to Commercial Drive, or what's known as The Drive, and it's really known for its bohemian atmosphere, and The Drive is influenced by really uh, Italian culture quite strongly, with eight blocks of The Drive having been de designated as Little Italy. And it features numerous Italian restaurants, cafes, and cultural festivals throughout the year, making it a real vibrant and diverse community. And then outside of Little Italy, but still on the remaining blocks of the drive, you'll also feel a variety of eclectic vibes from hippie to grunge. And there's over 300 distinct merchants from your boutique stores to dispensaries to dinner and dancing options. Then we have the Filipino community. And Vancouver is actually home to Canada's second largest Filipino community, making it the third largest Asian Canadian and visible minority group behind Chinese and, and South Asians here. So the Renfrew Collingwood neighborhood is really known to have a significant Filipino community and that area is sometimes referred to as Little Manila as it has a greater concentration of Filipino businesses, shops, authentic cuisines and cultural events there as well. If you're looking for some of the other cultural diversity and communities in the other cities surrounding Vancouver, then go right down below this video and just leave a comment and let me know what you want to learn more about or what are the areas specifically that you want to learn and find out where they are and I'd be happy to answer those in the comments. Pro number four is the food. We have absolutely amazing food to here in the city of Vancouver and so much of that is because we have such a diverse culture that I just talked about is that you can get any type of food that you want and you can basically rely that it's actually authentic to that area because we have such a strong culture of every single ethnicity here and so by far hands down the food here in the greater Vancouver area is absolutely amazing especially if you love anything and all things Asian food related. Pro number five of living in Vancouver is our mild climate. We have fantastic weather here and very, very mild compared to the rest of the country. Here on the West Coast, you know, in our winters, we'll average typically between zero to five degrees Celsius, which is gonna be about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And then in our summers, we average around the low 20s, which is gonna be about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So in terms of, we don't deal with the extremes like the rest of Canada does in the prairies, central and eastern Canada. And we don't deal with super hot, humid summers, and we don't have the large amounts of snow and extreme cold that the rest of the country does. And so we're very mild in terms of our, our climate here, which is fantastic because it provides so many options to be able to be outdoors all year round. One of the comments that gets thrown around regularly when people talk about Vancouver is it's one of those few places that you could go skiing, you could go golfing, and you could be out on the water all in the same day. And that leads us right into pro number six, which is that it is so easy to be able to have an active lifestyle here. And Vancouver really promotes that active lifestyle. And it's so easy when we have mild temperatures all year round to be able to do your indoor sports or your outdoor sports and get outside and get that fresh air. Vancouverites are very health conscious and having an active lifestyle and being healthy is just what we do well because it's the nature of just being surrounded by that type of lifestyle here. In terms of green spaces, Vancouver boasts over 250 parks throughout the city and Stanley Park alone has over 27 kilometers of trails through it. And when you head over towards UBC Pacific Spirit Regional Park, has over 70 or 80 kilometers of trails there as well. So it is so easy to be able to escape from the city and get right into the forest and just completely separate and escape from that city living and be able to experience the absolute beauty and the natural wonders that we have around us here. Then just outside the city limits of Vancouver, you have the ocean as your playground, but you also have the North Shore Mountains in North Vancouver and West Vancouver. So you have Mount Seymour, Cypress Mountain, and Grouse Mountain, three ski snowboard mountains all in our backyard, great hiking, snowshoeing all year round. Then just an hour, hour and a half away, we have Squamish, which has been the Canadian outdoor recreation capital of Canada and fantastic. And then just beyond that is Whistler, which is obviously world renowned as well for its absolutely amazing skiing and snowboarding all throughout the winter season. Pro number seven living in Vancouver is, has a decent economy. Not a super strong, but a good economy driven by industries like technology, film, and, and natural resources. But there's also a lot of job opportunities in different sectors as well. So what are kind of the main employment sectors in Vancouver? Well, the largest sectors are definitely going to be tech for sure and IT, your professional options like doctors, lawyers, engineers, technical services, healthcare, uh, social assistance, and then accommodation and food because obviously we're a tourism hub. And also add, add to this, just the general texting overall and our vibrant uh, film industry here. Now, finding a job as an expat can be a little bit tough, but not impossible. You know, you're, we are facing a skills shortage, so especially in tech and IT, healthcare, and the trades. 
So if you have some post-secondary education in these fields, you may not have a hard time finding a suitable position there. Now, if working for someone else is not your style, also don't worry, because self-employment in BC all is also more popular than basically the rest of Canada with around 18% of our local workforce being self-employed. And despite the cost of, of living here, entrepreneurs actually do love setting up in Metro Vancouver. Pro number eight of living in Vancouver is the healthcare system. Now, I know that some people are going to completely disagree with me on this, and that is totally fine. Our system provides universal coverage and high quality care, which when you need it, and knowing that you won't be facing a bill of, of tens of thousands of dollars afterward is, is comforting. The dark side of that though, is that wait times, depending on what you're needing, can be absurdly long and causing it to really affect your life negatively for a long period of time. Problem number nine is our public transportation. And you know, we do have an efficient public system that makes commuting within the city and the surrounding areas pretty convenient. Compared to having a car, the costs are also significantly cheaper. So, I mean, unless your car is paid off, most people are looking at a minimum lease or finance payment of 500 bucks a month, uh, and then $200 a month or, or more for gas, you know, and that's if you're not commuting a long ways. You know, if you get a TransLink uh, three zone pass to go all the way across from, from Surrey to Vancouver, you're looking at $189 a month for that pass. So significantly cheaper in terms of being able to have a car and commuting and, and dealing with the traffic congestion on that side of things. Pro number 10 is our educational system and institutions that we have available here. Vancouver hosts very reputable universities and colleges, including UBC, which consistently ranks among the top 50 universities globally and recently for the second year in a row has tied for first place in the world for the impact in industry, innovation, and infrastructure. Then UBC, our neighboring suburb in Burnaby, placed first in the world for its commitment to sustainable cities and communities. And it's also recognized as Canada's top university for innovation and the entrepreneurial spirit. And then overall inclusive of our elementary and secondary schools, BC has previously been recognized and ranked third in the world for its education system, just behind Japan and Finland. Now that was a few years back, but we still maintained a very strong educational system here. And no matter what age that your kids are in terms of wanting to be able to come here and have access to great education, it is definitely found here. The final pro, pro number 11, is that Vancouver is safe. Overall, Vancouver has a low crime rate and is, is considered safe. You know, walking through the city during the day or at night, you are going to feel safe. Now, of course, as any metropolitan area, there's gonna be a few areas you wanna remain vigilant and cautious, but you're gonna primarily find that around concentrated closer to the downtown east side, as I mentioned in the cons of this video. Now, Chinatown and Gastown are two areas very well known and absolutely worth seeing. However, given their proximity to the downtown east side, you might feel a little bit uncomfortable in that area during the night hours. However, outside of that, you're probably going to still have this sense of security in the city and the immediate surrounding suburbs. Now, when it comes to violent crimes, they're actually very rare here. And the aspect of crime that does come up in the headlines that we're a little bit more known for is property crime, meaning theft um, from homes or primarily theft from vehicles. And a lot of that, again, was gonna happen in the concentration where things, there's a little bit more homelessness and, and addiction happening. And that accounts for the majority of it. Of course, there's gonna be stuff all over in different parts of the city, even the well-to-do neighborhoods, this is experience. And I've had my car broken into a couple of times as well in different areas. And, but that's been over the course of 20 years. And so, you know, it's bound to happen at some point and, and that's, typically more the majority of what you may experience and so just being vigilant and you know if you have a car don't leave anything in sight and and, and valuable in the car and, and outside of that you should be in pretty good pretty good hands here you made it all the way through through the 23 top pros and cons of moving to and living in vancouver and i want to thank you for joining me on this video before you go know that this is a very personal experience in every city people are going to love and other people are going to hate and it's gonna be a different experience for you based off of how you enter into that city and how you live your life to make it your own. And so all of those cons could be great positive. All the pros could be cons and it all depends on how you utilize it and how you live them in your life on a daily basis in any city that you go to. And so with that said, if you, again, I, my name is Jonathan Lerner with the Vancouver Life Real Estate Group, and we help our clients buy, sell, and invest in the greater Vancouver area. If you have any questions about the real estate market, moving here, selling your home, or investing in property here, whether that's current resale or 
future pre-development projects. We, our team does that all, and we'd love to be able to help you make a smooth move and a smooth investment as well. And if you haven't yet, definitely make sure to go down below this video, give it a like, throw a comment, and definitely subscribe. And right after you subscribe, make sure to click that bell that shows up after you click that subscribe button. And what that will do is it will give you a notification each time that I release a new video, which I do weekly, and giving updates on the real estate market, but also the different neighborhoods throughout Vancouver and the surrounding areas. So you can get to know the area and how to navigate it and what might be the best areas for you to take a look when you come here. All right, that's it everybody. And if you have any questions, of course, call, text, email, and my Zoom link is right down below in the description of this video. And you can just click on that and book a 30 minute call fee and I'd be happy to have a chat and just find out what your situation is when you're thinking about making a move and what that might look like and, and if it makes sense for you and chat about all of those different details and questions that you have. So have an amazing day. Look forward to talking with you and we'll see you on the next video. It is time to live the Vancouver life.